Ay, 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 I'm back. It's time to make more monsters. I'm, uh, I think I've got everything sorted out today. I'm pretty sure I've got all the materials I will require. And I have a solid plan. Well, I feel like I have a solid plan for actually getting this right. I'm just doing my sound check. All right, cool. Sound is coming through. Now, you should be able to find, so if there's any problems with the, uh, the video or the uh, sound, you'll let me know. Um, but you will find the start time for this video, so you can skip past all of this fairly quickly if you need to. And um, I'll put that up uh, once the video is uh, published by YouTube in high definition and I'm not sleeping. So I'll do it probably when it's, it might be tomorrow, it might not. Hi Brandon, how's it going? And um, now, if you haven't been part of my live streams before, normally what I do is I present everything first and then I open it up to questions and answers. But this is my day off. So that means that I'm just going to make the monster. Well, I'm going to try and make the monster because I've never done a air elemental before. And you guys can chat along with me and that will keep my mo mind focused on what I'm supposed to be doing and also stop me from getting incredibly bored and also an opportunity for you to chat along. So um, yeah, let's get started. I'm just gonna switch over, uh, just do my presentation, just will the entry bit, and then we'll go straight into it, because uh, there, there's a lot of work to do. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I wanna talk about Dungeons and Dragons while I am making a cheap Dungeons and Dragons miniature. So yes, I am going to make a cheap Dungeons and Dragons miniature. I do this quite often, and as it happens, I have decided let's have a go at making the Air Elemental. Now, for those of you who are wondering, Fred, is this going to work? Is it going to look different to some of the other things you've made? Yes, it should. I have actually taken a bit of time to try and collect materials and do a bit of research so I had a fair idea of what I was doing. I have also brought along a sample. So this image is a sample of what I'm aiming for, but there's a miniature, which I actually do have, but I have a picture for you. I'm going to try and duplicate this miniature, which means I'm going to use a whole bunch of different materials to do this. I think I'm going to go with uh, uh, paper clips. I'm going to use some tin foil. I'm going to use some rope. I'm also going to use some uh, stones and also a little bit of uh, uh, cork to sort of build things out. I have a few corks that I can cut up. And also I'm gonna use a bit of uh, milliput to form sort of the features for the face. That's probably where the only milliput will go. And there's gonna be some hot glue involved. So you will get an opportunity to hear me scream in, in pain and agony as I burn myself. So it's very entertaining, I find. Um, and I'm sure other people enjoy it too. So stick around. This is what we're starting with, okay? I have uh, created my own base. I make my own bases out of MDF board. And I cut out like a, a truckload of these ages ago. Did a video on it as well. Cheap. Now, yes, I know what you're thinking. Um, as, it, as it happens, doing great. I hope you have stress-free creation. Brandon, I really do hope I have stress-free creation. Uh, now, if I'm doing this, you are welcome to do your own painting or own crafting. That's fine. Now, you've got quotations cheap, um, Dolphus. And I totally understand what you mean, okay? Cheap as in, as cheap as I can make it without it getting a bit complicated. There are some materials here that I have purchased, but they are reusable. I can use them for other things. So I would say it is going to be cheap-ish. You'll, you'll get the point when we get to the end of this. So I've got my base. Um, the board itself, you can buy quite a large piece of board and you can get, you know, hundreds of these things. I, I used a whole saw to cut them all out. I've got one right today. So this is what I'm aiming for. This is what I want to try to duplicate. We're going to stick it over there for now. Well, it's it's going to get in the way. Is it? We're, we're, we're going to stick it out of the way. We'll stick it there. It can it can live there. You've got a fair idea of what, I, what I'm aiming for. And, uh, and now we're going to go with paper clips. So I've got three paper clips. I'm going to straighten them out. I've got a pair of pliers to do all of the hard, heavy work since my fingers are probably fairly weak in comparison to the wire. These, these paper clips are heavy duty rather than uh, lighter wire. You can get uh, paper clips that are stronger or weaker. And I've gone with the heaviest paper clip I could find. Now, paper clips aren't expensive. You could just use wire. That's not a problem. I'm going to straighten them out to begin with. I'm going to do that with three 
um, paper clips because I'm using the concept is that uh, this whirly earth um, sorry this whirly air elemental is going to start off with a central bo um, central body uh, and and of course it's more like a stalk I suppose you might say a whirlwind and then it's going to divide into three different sections one for the head and two for the arms and where the, the hands will, will be formed. I'm going to probably try to aim for using cork for the hands and the fingers. I'm not going to be getting carried away and trying to do anything too fancy with that. Once I have formed the paper clip structure, the armature itself, I'm going to use tin foil. As a lot of you know, I like using tin foil. Don't like using EVA foam that's pink. Um, particularly if it's really soft so I, I'm not an EVA foam sort of person since I don't seem to be able to get EVA foam in my country easily I know other people can but that's 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 fine but I can't do it I have uh, been working my way through uh, a variety of different things and I think I was working on armor class today I was doing a, a little bit of prep for a video on what is armor class? I found a whole lot of old notes. So I'd never done the video, I'd just written the notes and nothing else. So I was sort of trying to compile some images. All right, so there's the beginning. What do we got here? Pesh arm. What's the word? My nibble. Nib, nib, nibs. 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 Yeah, well, the word is Fred is trying to make another miniature. Um, if there's a lot of swearing, I'm going to keep my swearing down to a minimum because it's a fan, family friendly channel, right? Family friendly. I'm gonna to try to keep things down to a minimum in terms of stress. Okay, so that's not working very well for me. So we'll just try holding both, all three with the pliers and then sort of bind them. Well, that's not working either. So we're gonna try two, we'll start with two. Start with two, I just need to start it off. If I can get it started, that it should be fine, right? I need them to bend together so I can, uh, Ah, you you're not staying there. It seemed easy when I when I was thinking about how I would do this. It was like, hmm, that should be not hard to do. But the wire is quite thick, so I guess that's half the problem. All right, so hold it tight, bend it round, bend them both, like so. All right, now we're getting somewhere now. Okay, okay, that's good news. Look at that. I'm getting that one together. If I can get that one together, I get the other ones together, it'll all be good. Positive thinking. Uh huh. There. Right, so I want to keep winding that in because I feel like I'm going to need a fair amount of it joined. And I think I need to use the other hand. It's easy to hold the pliers with my right hand and then go with the uh, the other side for the. Just, just move. Where am I going to move you? You're gonna get in the way. Move over here. There. You move over there. I'll I'll here. You don't get in the way, mate. I'm talking to my miniatures if you haven't figured it out. Hi, Rune. Rune static. Bird. Bird. What's that mean? Fake it till you make it, bro. Um, bro um, brother. Mate, that's exactly what I do. Pesham, you know I do. I just fake it till I make it. You're either going to figure out how to make a air elemental or how not to make an air, ele air elemental. Uh, hi Steve, how's it going? You guys are welcome to ask me questions about stuff if you feel inclined. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, so I need to leave enough to form the arms and the wiggly body. So, and also enough to fold it so I can actually glue it in place. So I'm just going to guess down there, 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 then base, and then arms, who knows, who cares, who cares, well you guys, I'm in Ikea because I'm doing it right. I don't have audio on, I am missing any important dialogue, mate, you are, you are missing all of the important stuff, not having the dialogue on, there's no telling how much important stuff you have missed, um, <laughs> I'm so naughty, I know I am. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try and twist the third one into this. I don't tell him that, Pear Sham. Not really, we're, uh, we're making minis. Well, yeah, but you know, you never know. There might be some actual useful conversation take place. 
So as I was saying, so I'm, I'm working on a video on what is armor class. Not how to calculate it so much, but what is armor class. I did a video very, very long time ago on what is hit points. And it's always one of those things that people, oh, I turned it around. That, that didn't work very well for me last time, did it? Where, where people get confused as to what is going on with armor class. So I thought I would do that. And I am probably going to do a video on... I think I've got some notes on the Bard, one of the Bard abilities. Is it Jack of All Trades or something like that? I've been working on that as well. I think I've got the notes, I just don't have the images and the setup ready to go. So once I've got OBS set up, it should be all good. Okay, so the whole idea is the middle one is going to be where the head is going to be formed. And the other ones are going to be where the arms and hands will, uh, will be formed. So I'm going to bend them like so. I'm going to bend this over because I really sort of want like a... I was going to attach like a, a wooden ball to it. And I, I was like, mm, why is bad? But a ball of wood just seems like a pain in the butt. So I wouldn't do it. What's that rune? Okay, but I want the lore. <laughs> How many demigods were, <laughs> were, were smot? Smoot? Smoot? To come upon. A seemingly normal wooden token. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really doing uh, lore or character stuff today. Uh, I suppose I could, but no, not really. I will be trying to work on the Curse of Strahd and how to run, or my my experience of running the Curse of Strahd, uh, the whole thing. Um, and I'm still trying to toss up where I go with that. It might wind up being a how to prepare for the Curse of Strahd before I go into something else. Because um, I, I did sort of do a post-mortem video at some point. So I figure that's probably answered some of the questions people might have. Now how am I going to do this? I'm going to have to ball up a bit of stuff. I'm going to use tin foil. Now, now it's not... It's not moving quite the way I want, so what am I doing? I'm going to... I know what I'll do. I'll bend that over, twist it together if I can, like at least once, and then I'll reform it. Okay. All right. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. I know it doesn't look like an air elemental. I know it looks nothing like that. Just wonder if there... If what was explained, mm, I'm not sure what that means. He's talking about doing a video on AC in the future. Yep, that's right, AC. And also probably going to be on the Bard and the Curse of Strahd. I suspect it'll wind up being how to prepare for the Curse of Strahd. Right, okay. All right, so that's that bit done. Now I've got to figure out how to make my shape look more like the miniature. So I feel like I'll bring this forward. So I just twist, twist, twist. And bend that round a little bit. And there's some pokey bits there, but we won't worry about it because hopefully I'm going to cover it. Either that or I can put some cork on it. I can cork that bugger. Okay, so that's sort of roughly forward. And now let us try and get some basic shape in the rest of this thing. So twisty twisties. Shapey, movie roundies. Ugh, this is hard to move. Bend like a reed in the wind. Well, it's not really bending like a weed. Is that like a paper clip? It is absolutely a paper clip. All right, so I've got that bit. I need to bend this more. Ugh, ugh, bend, baby. It's bending the wrong way. I'm going to bend it that way more. There we go. There. <laughs> And then this way, round, like so. And then uh, I've got to get the Y bit sorted first, right? So if I don't get that sorted, everything else is just not going to come out right. I feel like it's gone a squidgied off to the side a little bit. Oh! Foreskin. No, 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 no. No foreskin. It's why I kind of like a paper clip. Yes, it's... It's definitely a paper clip. It's not like a paper clip. It definitely is a paper clip. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you're thinking it looked like a paper clip, 
Yeah, it's definitely a paper clip. All right, now I'll bend this round and that'll be what I glue onto the base of this thing. Uh, I'm gonna bend it some more. Bend the baby. I've got something to attach it to. I can spread it because there's three of them. So that'll help spread the load. That's, come on you. Give it up. Let me have it. <sighs> Hi Lime, how's it going? What should you uh, play after Lost Mine of Found Elva if you want to continue the story? Okay, so there is actually two videos I've done on the next adventure to run after the Lost Mine of Found Elva. So um, Lime, if you're needing advice around that, I suggest it goes into quite a lot of detail rather than me trying to explain right now while I'm trying to bend wire. But my advice to you is go check that one out and that'll certainly help get you on the, the right trail. Okay, so I'm looking at my shape, trying to figure out where I need to go. So this is, needs to be bent back more and then bend it forward more. Okay, so this bend in here first. But um, I didn't actually continue with another adventure after the Lost Mine of Fandelva. I actually uh, allowed that campaign to end just because I felt there were a, a few problems that would crop up for me, and they did. I knew they would. Um, so I felt like it was the right decision, but if you really, really want to continue things on with that particular adventure, you can. And there is a whole bunch of advice that I've given on that. Uh, there. Okay, and we just got to make sure that it's roughly where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that necessarily answers your question, Lime. Against the Giants? Yeah, I suppose you could if you really wanted to. I mean, look, you're the dungeon master. You make those final decisions about all of that sort of stuff, eh? All right, so uh, twisty, windy, does it feel like it's roughly the same sort of... Mm, maybe, not exactly, but it's going to do. I don't know that I can actually get it exact. The arm positions, we're going to go with up high here, bring this side down lower, and then round and here's my biggest problem because it's wire I have to build some tin foil onto it so my rope will actually wind around it otherwise it's going to be a disaster I've already figured that one out so that one's going down more that one's going forward more and that is should be the basic shape so now I just need to glue that in place and then I've got to wind my stuff on. Actually, I think I'm going to wind the tin foil on now. I need a drink of water. Uh, what's that? Um, watching a movie, Brent. Oh, okay. Uh, got to take off. Have a good one, Fred and all. Yep, not a problem, Brent. Go watch the movie. I love movies. I went and saw um, Captain Marvel. And I can understand why people are a little... Um, iffy about it, I'm not going to say any more, but uh, there's a lot of good stuff in it, and I feel like that by the end of the movie, um, anything that might have happened uh, at the beginning um, didn't matter, that was sort of my view anyway. Uh, what's that, uh, Pear Sham, I, I meant Storm King's Thunder. You meant Storm King's Thunder? I'm not sure what you meant by Storm King. Against the Giant. Storm King's Thunder. Yes, um, Storm King's Thunder can be run after the Lost Mine of Fandalva. They do have some, you know, um, it is structured in such a way that you could transfer from that. Let's just blend that in. I want it to be tight. I want it really, really tight in here. Make it easier for me to actually make this all work. And then we keep winding around this thing, building it up, thicker and thicker and thicker. Uh, you're welcome, um, Lime. I feel like that video is going to go over all of the possible options, because I talk about a lot of different adventures that you could use or um, ways of making it work. I know a lot of people feel like, you know, after you've done The Lost Mine of Fandelva, you should just go with your your own adventure, which is fine. If you feel confident enough to do so, then do it. But if you don't, you don't have to do that, eh? 
I know a lot of people sort of seem to be caught up in like everything has to be your own stuff. Once you know you're uh, you're not actually playing Dungeons and Dragons or being a real DM if, unless it's your own stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, it's fine for people who have time, but uh, if you've got kids and a job and life and so forth, just sometimes that's just not possible. And I, the only reason I'm able to do the sorts of things I'm able to do on this channel is because really I don't have any kids and I don't have a partner anymore. Um, so yeah, I have a lot more time <laughs> available. Whereas I certainly wouldn't have had that time before. I'm winding this around the body. I'm going to build up the body here a little bit more. I'm just winding it around the, uh, the wire to make the arms a little bit thicker. And you might have noticed that I've already um, torn up my tin foil and I'm folding it. And that's just so that I don't have to do this quite so much. And then it's a matter of just getting it to go around the wire. I'm going to leave the ends with the, the pokey out bits of wire so I can trim it. And that'll also allow me to shove the cork hands and fingers on. Which is probably going to be happening, I don't know, sometime soon. This might actually wind up being a two-part video. We'll see how we go. Um, hot drink. Uh, no, hot glue time. Yeah, hot glue time. I might use the hot glue very shortly, but not just yet. Not just yet. You could run Hesel. I'm not sure what Hesel is. Um, Nubis. Is that, is that Nubis? Hopefully I got it. Nubis. What about an adventure that isn't um, extremely hard for players that finished their first adventure? Uh, Fandelva. Um, is Horde of the Dragon Queen an alright choice? I, I feel like Horde of the Dragon Queen doesn't really follow on from the Lost Mine of Fandelva very well. And because the Lost Mine of Fandelva is superior, in my view, to Horde of the Dragon Queen, um, I feel like you will probably get a little bit frustrated because, you know, the structure and the way things work, Lost Mine of Fandelva is just a better adventure compared to Horde of the Dragon Queen. And it also doesn't require quite so much work from a dungeon master. You know, Horde of the Dragon Queen requires a lot of work. Rise of Tiamat is a, a good adventure, but the thing with Rise of Tiamat, I loved it. I thought it was great, but it required a lot of work on my part to make it all come together. And if you're not ready for that, then it's not going to be the right adventure for you. So uh, just, just bear that in mind. Um, sometimes it's better to not go straight with these the event, you know, sometimes it's better just to start Horde of the Dragon Queen from the very beginning if you're going to do it. Uh, Nubis, some of the adventures seem quite uh, brutal. Yes, they are. Uh, if you mean in terms of character death, yes, they, they certainly can. Um, but that's really up to you. You can change anything. I'm really not too concerned. I've run the Curse of Strahd, so um, I'm not really concerned about character death anymore. We had so much character death in that game that... Um, I'm just not I'm just not tied to anything in terms of worrying about I just don't worry about nothing nowadays uh, when I'm DMing. I know that sounds terrible, but you know, I don't think there is anything that we didn't wind up having to contend with with the Curse of Strat. And I was talking to one of the players yesterday actually about it, and he just laughed and he said, Yeah, yeah, it was like that. Um, okay, what else have we got here? I like Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I think Dungeon of the Mad Mage rune has got lots of promise. It is something you can pull apart. You know, you don't have to use the entire thing. And it's essentially a collection, if you ask me, of short adventures, which you can or can use or don't use. So, yeah, I think it's a good choice. Even Tales from the Yawning Portal is a good choice because you can just pluck out the bits you want and leave the rest. So carrying on from, you know, something like The Lost Mine of Fandelva or something else into um, Tales from the Yawning Portal or even, um, you know, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, I think that can all work pretty well. I don't think that would be an issue. Uh, Tommy, how's it going? I keep about 15 Frost Giants handy at all times. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course you do. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. What's that rune? Run into the abyss, but um, replace everything from cosmic dreadnoughts of uh, varying sizes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Why not? I don't see why you couldn't. Seems like a, a reasonable strategy. All right, let's keep going with the tin foil. I'm going to just fold this a bit more and then tear it and make it a little bit shorter. It's just a little bit easier to handle. And remember, I'm leaving the, the end of the paper clip where the fingers and hands are supposed to be. I'm leaving that free. Otherwise, it's going to be too hard to stick the cork in place with the tin foil there. Hi, no, no, ah, hona, ah, Dungeon of the Mad Mage seems like a, it's a lot of investment of time. Well, you don't have to go to level 20. Level 5 to level 20 is a lot of investment in time. And I was talking to um, John Paul, my Dungeon Master, about just how complicated the game gets once you get to, you know, level 8. And he was really finding it difficult because there was three different monsters on the table. They all had sort of different abilities. And, you know, almost everybody at the table is playing a spellcaster of some kind. Um, I've got a, a, you know, a paladin sorcerer. Somebody else has got a bard. Somebody else has got a cleric. And he's trying to keep track of how those things work. And, you know, there's a lot of sort of dependency on uh, the players actually making sure they know how to do things. And it can get frustrating, really frustrating, when players have to look up stuff. And then he's, he, you know, if he's not hugely familiar with all of that stuff and then somebody decides to change their action or forgotten ability, it gets really, really hard to manage. So, yes, I don't advise every dungeon master or every group going to level 20. I don't think it's actually necessary. And when I was playing at high level, um, I changed the way that I ran the game and the type of game, um, adventure that we were playing quite significantly. It was it did not look like a low-level game or a mid-level game. It was completely different. There was a lot of other things going on. And I had to do that. It's just there was no other choice. Just drinking water. I'm trying to keep myself hydrated. Ha! Let's keep folding and, and layering. Folding and layering. <clears throat> What's that, Tommy? Creative imagination that a, a group can enjoy. My favourite D&D game. Yeah, well, you know, that's what it all's all about, right? Is creation and uh, using your imagination. So, absolutely agree. Now, for those of you who are wondering, Fred, this does not look like an earth elemental at all. And I'm like, well, I agree, it doesn't. But it will. It will. you just got to give me a little bit of time. A little bit of time and it'll all work out. He says, I'm confident. I think it'll, it'll be fine. I'm not worried yet. I'll let you know when I, I, I have concerns. <laughs> uh, dear. Lime, I have a custom campaign planned further on. Swashbuckling, including uh, slightly a uh, plane shift. Okay. Ixlan, but I'm waiting for Salt Marsh to drop. Fair enough. Yep, Salt Marsh should actually make it a lot easier to run a campaign that's uh, set on the seas or under the seas or if you decide to go um, spell jammer and go hopping around sounds like a lot of fun now have I, uh, do I need to glue that in place yes I do I will have to glue that in place here we go this is this is the opportunity to watch me scream and yell as I burn myself oh all this glue stuck to the gun go over there string stringy bits okay here we go oh almost forgot need my tool so I don't burn myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Why is it not going? Ah, there you go. Glue. And tool. And fold it over. And then uh, I want more to go in and, and, and just wrap it. Wrap it. Yeah. Got it. I did it. All right. More tin foil. Uh, what's that, Pesham? Nurzgal Nerz, has a series of one-shots. So does um, Cabal Press. I've done reviews on their stuff. That's really good. I liked Prepared. Um, I've got the first one. I don't have the second one, but I, if I can get the second one, I would. Um, and also, I like the Book of Lairs, which, you know, the Prepared was like each adventure 
lasts about a session and it's one page. And then um, the Book of Lairs, they're about three or four pages long and they, they will last you a couple of different sessions, so a couple of sessions of play. And that sort of uh, thing is right up my alley because minimal preparation, I don't have to plan for months or weeks, which can be a little bit, um, a bit hard to actually pencil away that much time. Okay, so I'm just going to build up this section here. It kind of now looks a little bit like a, uh, what would you call it, a, a silver a silver shadow. Does it look like a silver shadow? No. No, it's going to look like an air elemental. Trust me, it will. Uh, Nurzgal has decent random tables. Okay. Eager for salt marsh. I think there's a lot of people who have been hanging out for that. Um, I certainly would be um, more than willing to run a series of sort of nautical adventures that are lightly sort of tied together because it means that if I decide they don't you know if they don't really want to keep going with that and they want to go onto land and do something else I can pull in adventures of my own of my own creation or I can use other adventures that are short because I've got quite a few now I've got Tales from the Yawning Portal um, I haven't run any of those yet, and I've got the Book of Lairs, I've got um, Prepared, um, I've got a few one-shots that I never actually finished, so I could use them again. It's the thing, you know, when you make stuff yourself, you can reuse it if it doesn't get used. Okay, right, tin foiling it. Mamma ma, ma, mia, pirates. Pirates are always nice, aren't they? I love the idea of having pirates in a game just seems so um, it reminds me of uh, all of those old pirate movies that I watched as a kid when I was watching sorry if you guys can't see what I'm doing mate remind me I need to move back into the screen because I, I have a tendency of moving off to the side so you can't actually see what I'm doing so if I do that you let me know I'm going to wind this round. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build up the sort of the, the shoulder and give it a bit more bulk before I start trying to do the rest of this. And I've also got to do the same with the head because the head is going to give me a lot of trouble. I can see it right now. I thought it wouldn't, but I know it will now. I can tell from what I, what's going on here that it's going to give me trouble. Anyway, okay, so that's going to give me something to actually glue things to, which is good. And we're going to build up the head. Mm, whoops, too much. Okay, so um, what's the easiest way to do this? I feel like I'm just going to do layer and just keep wrapping it around until I get where I need to be. Because the head needs to be a bit more bulbous, doesn't it? It's kind of on the flat side right now. So we need a bulbous head. What's that line? Especially since we don't remember Johnny Depp anymore. <laughs> I wasn't thinking quite so much of um, Pirates of the Caribbean. I was actually thinking of some of the older movies with um, Errol Flynn, uh, like Captain Blood and Treasure Island. Um, oh, there are other ones. I just, off the top of my head, I just can't remember them. There was a time when they were super popular, much like the, um, the old Western, the old... Um, American frontier western, uh, where you, you know, which, which is why we got so many pirate movies before the likes of, um, of Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean series is really based off all of that stuff that we watched as a kid uh, many, many years ago. Um, Age of Sail Pirates, yeah, exactly. All right, let's keep folding. Half an hour. I know. I know it doesn't look great, guys. Give me, give me some time. It'll, it'll get there. I'm gonna just fold that over there a little bit. I'm gonna build up the sides just a fraction, and then I'm gonna wrap something around that. Actually, I might even glue it in place. It's like I'm giving him head warmers. <laughs> yeah, that's right, head warmers. Um, there we go. That's sort of roughly. It'll give it a little bit of bulk, and I'll glue that into place. 
poof, just like that. It's like he's got a little cap. I'm putting a little cap on him. Come on, glue. Glue. More glue on the other side. Oh, no, the gun's not producing. Where's the other stick? I've run out of... Shove it in the back there. Keep going before it dries. Okay. All right. And... Right, so now, pliers, squeeze it in place. Oh, that's not working. That's just burning myself. Yeah. <laughs> ah, dear. Okay, that didn't work out quite the way I'd hoped. I'll fix it. I just have to wrap more stuff around it, but I have to wait until that, that glue actually dries. Yep, there's still wet glue there. Okay, where's more tin foil? I think what I will do is I'm going to go with the, the crush method. Because I want to build the head up as much as possible. Because this miniature here, right, the head is probably the biggest part of it. So that needs to be as bulbous as possible. Okay. Alright, now press it down. Squidge it in. So all I did was just squash up the tin foil and then press it into place and now I'm hopefully getting the kind of shape I'm after like so ha there we go yeah yeah it's working squeeze it yeah that's a way that's it good all right and then I'm gonna give it a bit more depth this way by squeezing it a little bit more we I need to be careful about how much I do this because I, I don't want to get too carried away. Okay, so next I need to just sort of deal with this section. So I will, it's a good thing I uh, tore up a lot of tin foil. <laughs> oh dear. What's that, Dolphus? Um, you do so much more work than, than me. Oh. You'll have to tell me, what, have you made one of these before? Because if you did, I'd, I'd certainly like to see it. Okay, all right, let's just build that up. I'm trying to get it a little bit fatter. If we get the structure right, then the rest of it should flow nicely. Okay, so I'm just, just because I've got to wrap things around here too, so I don't want to get too carried away in some places, otherwise it's not going to work out. All right, now I need to have enough glue coming through there that's hot enough that's Okay, I might have to, I'm going to have to set that. That's actually just going to come free. So we'll set that in place. Just cut up magic cards. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Magic cards can be tokens or pawns. I've done videos on that as well. Um, but yes, totally get it. Yep, absolutely. Find yourself a magic card that's an air elemental. Bam. Punch that baby out. Cut it out. Make a token. Make a pawn. Easy peasies. Okay. Okay, so that is, I think, going to work. Now, I've got this rope. This is poly rope. It's cheap. It's nasty. Um, but it's also probably going to melt as I am sticking it in place, which is kind of useful to me. <clears throat> I'm going to give this a go, if I can actually get it to come undone. I had left it together with one sort of strand of stuff wrapped around it so it didn't all go completely bananas on me. I'm going to cut off sections of it with my pliers and then I'm going to wrap it round to give it that sort of um, twisty air elemental look. Doing! Did it cut all the way through? Yes it did. Okay, where are we going to make you live? You're going to live over there and we'll take that and I'm going to just get a bit of spot of glue before it can separate on me because I can see it's trying to. Boom! Okay, so you can't go nowhere. And the idea... Oh, you are doing it, aren't you? I knew you. Knew it. I knew I'd have problems. Technical issues. Where's the other tool? That ain't gonna work. I need a drink of water. I'm waiting for my, um, my rope to, to dry. <clears throat> okay, so the idea is I'm gonna wrap it round from the base towards the top of the arm miniature. Do the same thing around the arms to give it the look of, as if there's um, air 
zipping around in a circular um, rotation. Do 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 do. PSM. Just my players. What's that? Um, I'd just tell my players to imagine I'm too lazy and cheap. Well, fair enough. Y yep, we can. Absolutely. You can just say, just use your imagination. It is an air elemental. It looks like a big uh, gust of wind that is whipping around back and forth. Okay, so how am I going? I'm just going to do a, a quick wrap around just to see how this is going to work. I can tell you now, you want to stick around because I'm going to be burning myself all the time trying to make this happen. I can see it right now. For, for this rope to be wrapped around here and, with, and me not burn myself, very, very unlikely. So there's going to be a lot of screaming shortly. <clears throat> just rip off uh, World of Warcraft for um, visuals. Yeah, yeah, that's the way, Brandon. Absolutely. Okay. All right. The screaming is going to start. We're going to put some uh, hot glue on there and uh, and uh, listen to me um, yelp like a uh, <clears throat> a pussy. Here we go. Hot glue. And I'm going to attach it first and see if it'll stay. If I can get the 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 beginning of it started, then um, it's probably going to be more successful. Oh, I love my mama. For those of you who can hear the sheep, my neighbours have this thing. What they do is they buy themselves uh, a sheep that's really young. They then have it in the backyard. It's on its own with nobody else. It gets lonely. It gets bored. And then when it's just the right size, they get it butchered and eat it. Which, look, I'm all for eating meat, but I feel like... That's a rough way to go with the poor sheep. That's just my view. So I'm having a, I'm having a, a go at them. Disco Inferno. Yeah. Disco Inferno. I don't even know. What is a Disco Inferno? Hilarious neighbours. I know, Well, I don't know if it's necessarily hilarious. I really feel bad for it because it, 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 it goes, it, it bleats uh, at night, in the morning, in the afternoon. It doesn't stop bleating because it's so bored. And, you know, it's got no mum around. It's got no brothers and sisters. Now, most sheep are pretty st um, stupid, but, um, yeah, I feel that, like that's a rough, rough deal. You're on your own. You get fattened up, and then somebody eats you. Uh, and you never had an opportunity to at least hang out with your own kind. Yes, well, yeah, yeah. Well, Dolphus, you're right. The sheeps eat the grass, but there isn't an awful lot of grass for it to eat. That's the problem. So it's going to be sitting in mud very shortly. It's going to start raining, and that'll be the end of that. Okay. So um, this is this is the interesting bit. I am trying to connect it. You can see it hasn't been hugely successful. This might wind up being a bust. I always have um, the occasional uh, miniature that comes out as a bust. This might be one of these, those times. Okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't really want to just coat it with hot glue because I don't feel like it's going to get enough um, texture to it, which is why I want to use the rope if I can. I feel like if I use the rope, it'll look a lot more interesting. The trick is is getting it to actually go around and not burn myself. Okay, all right, so I'm going to put some hot glue on here. We're going to have a go. So wait for it. Any moment now, there's going to be screaming. Not from the sheep, but probably from me. Here we go. And round you go once. Round you go a second time. Nicely, tightly packed, like so. And then I'm going to hold it. I can feel the heat, but it isn't burning me yet. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll... No, now it is. Now it is. Okay, so a little bit of waiting required. It's a good opportunity to have a drink of water. Um, the kids have come out to have a look at the sheep, so that's always nice. Uh, what's that? Tie it in a knot at the bottom. Um, hit it with glue, then wrap it. That's actually a very good idea. For those of you who are wondering how to do it, yep. Tie a knot at the bottom, hit it with the glue. It seems to be in place, so I don't think it's going to come free. 
and I feel like I can keep doing this now. I can also go back over it and apply glue to sort of um, change the texture of it. Right, let's do this again. So back end, round on the sides, round the front, down that way. It's got lots of glue and now I'm just going to pull it round tight. Keep winding it. Okay. Okay, so that's... Didn't wind quite the way I needed it to, but... Um, never mind. There we go. It is... Um, the idea, it's coming off. I feel like it is going to work. And I can fill in the niches where all the tin foil is with hot glue to sort of give it a bit more... Um, body what's that pear charm um, get thick uh, natural gloves yeah probably should do that I do actually have some string so if you find that this is harder to um, to wrap around your miniature you can actually probably just wrap it in string and actually I could probably go back over it with string because it'll, I've got some thinner string and that'll actually make it a little bit easier because that stuff isn't uh, it's not poly so poly's a little bit harder to control We'll do that shortly, but not just yet. We're going to uh, cut off another piece of this stuff. And cut it. Yeah, come on, baby, cut off. There, there we go. And then I just need to make sure it doesn't separate by just dobbing a bit of glue at the ends. And then I'll do the same thing with the other side. And she's all good. What's that lime? Um, also, don't do this with super glue. No, no, don't do it with super... Hot glue, fine. Other glues, good. Super glue, not a good idea. Now, I understand the um, the chemical reaction between um, the poly rope and uh, super glue is, is quite aggressive, right? And that's the reason not to do it. For those of you who are wondering why, why shouldn't I do that, Fred? I think that is the, the key reason, is the chemical reaction. Okay, so that's that end. We'll do the same thing with the other end here. Since that it hasn't seemed to have separated yet. Come here. Just plant a bit of glue on the end there, and just wait for it to set. Yep, I thought that was the right line. I do remember, when I was at uh, Mitre 10, I do remember some instructions about what we could do with rope and what we couldn't do with rope. <clears throat> Actually comes in useful sometimes. <clears throat> okay, let's just check to see if this is actually dried. Nope. Just let it... Give it a blow. I will blow on it. Yeah, here we go. Good, cool. That's ready to, to apply. So, now attaching it was my difficult process. I feel like if I tie it round, it's going to look a little weird. So I am going to I am going to try and do the hard, fix one end and then wrap. So I can kind of continue the, the general shape that I am aiming for. And I can apply more rope where I need to anyway. So let's let's see if that'll work. Uh, it's a good thing I did not um, try and stick this to the base first, eh? Can you imagine how difficult it would have been to get hold of it? It would, have, it would just not have worked. Okay, so I'm just holding this. I'll get this to set. <clears throat> what's, Darren, what's up, Darren? Um, hey, Fred, just popped in to say hi on mobile so I'll catch the rerun. Not a problem. No, I don't have a problem with that at all. We've had a little bit of fun. I am trying to uh, glue poly rope onto tin foil. Certainly it's a lot easier than trying to do it onto, uh, onto a bit of wire. But um, yeah, it's a bit time consuming. Somebody's having a good laugh. Yes, it is time to have a drink. That's right, have a, have a drink while I'm waiting for it to set. Okay, all right, I feel like that's that's in place. We'll wrap it. Um, and then 
we'll come back and deal with the next problem, which is filling in all the gaps. Okay, so glue, 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 a lot more glue here. Don't try to do too much all at once, Fred, or you will hurt yourself. Uh huh, uh huh. Uh -huh. And glue, glue, glue. Okay, right, that's it. And now wrap it like your life depended on it because because you've got a limited time to make it happen wrap that baby wrap that thing get it round and then hold it in place without burning yourself <laughs> ah dear ah <clears throat> So, sorry guys, I, I do I do find it kind of amusing. I knew there was the potential for me to wind up having this problem. <laughs> but I think the general idea is working. Because I really wanted to have um, an elemental that had that sort of, that, um, that circular roped look to it. And I, th I think this is going to look a lot like ear, uh, twisting and winding round. Okay, so this is, this is trying to come free. No, you don't. Stay there. Stay. Where's my tool? You're staying here. I told you. Just, yep. <clears throat> Almost lost control of the rope. But it's all under control now. Don't need to panic. <laughs> Uh, dear. I feel like if I wrap around the body, I might have to actually do it too many times because I really want to build a bit of bulk to it. Well, that's sort of setting. And it's not going to be bulky enough. I feel like it's going to need to be bulkier. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of like pussy. Like a, a wimp. I don't want a wimp elemental. So I'm going to grab some more tin foil. Haven't run out yet. And I'm going to wind that round where the shoulder section is just now and build out a bit more bulk in it is that going to be too much? might be <laughs> alright, let's do it anyway that's what squishing and, and, um, and forcing the tin foil into places is all about, right? And to get the shape right yeah yeah just, just squeeze Crush that baby. It'll be strong. You won't need to worry about dropping it and breaking it. I'm pretty sure you'll find that it'll be strong enough to deal with just about anything. The only thing you don't want to be doing is mucking around with a super glue. Um, okay, so I'm going to just glue the back end of this. And then where's my tool? Fold it over. Glue it in place. It's heating up. Okay, all right, so while you are drying, stay. Let's get some more of this poly rope, because we're going to be using it. Oh, look at this. This is what happens. It's, it's got loose. We're trimming it. Trim it. There. Gotcha. Trim it. Hold on loose, but don't let go. Don't let go. That's right. Okay, all right. Sticking on the end here. And I'm just going to wait for this. Or will I wait? I'll have another drink of water. Pesham, if you cling too tightly, you're going to lose control. I've already lost control. It's, there's there's no, nothing I haven't lost control of, mate. mate. It's, it's all gone. I'd lost control when I, when I decided I would do this live, and I had never actually ever made one before. You knew I had lost my marbles, mate. Completely lost control. Lime? Speaking of weird noises, do you do any accents when you play or DM? Nah, I'm not really a, a DM who really does voices and things like that. I generally can't maintain them for very long and see it there. It's just too hard for me. Um, I can usually do a voice for a small period of time and then I lose it. Trim it with fire. Yeah, well I don't have any fire here. And because I'm in a confined space in my little office, I don't think it's a very good idea. Uh, that's stuck. 
All right, so I need a little bit more rope extended out, and then we'll cut that and glue that. Boom. Cut. Yes. Oop. He's lost control. Lost control. Um, but I have done voices in the past. I've just, yeah, I always find it difficult to maintain that voice. So I just try to think of, think of like, how, how would I feel and what would I say when I'm playing out a character? And um, I have the tendency to role play monsters, so I will make monster noises. Um, I'm pretty good at making a really terrible monster noise. Uh, I had somebody insist that I make the noise of a unicorn, um, which I won't repeat because it was appalling. And I remember, what was his name? I think Gareth. Had, uh, had said the fact that I was willing to make a, the noise of a unicorn and it was so bad was the only reason he stayed at the table. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. So you're telling me that my utter failure at trying to do something correctly was the reason you stayed around. And I was like, that's nice to know. <laughs> um, but I think it was more because I, um, I will try to do things that most of the time I feel quite uncomfortable about doing. I've sung at the table badly. I think a few people cringed on the times where I have sung. Um, I even wrote a one-shot musical D&D game. <laughs> uh, I can guarantee you it's never actually been played, okay? Uh, so if you were thinking that I'd actually played it out, no. It, no nobody, nobody was game for that one. There was a lot of people who said they would be, but it, it didn't turn into a reality. <laughs> uh, dear. What, the noise of a, no, no, I'm not, because it really, it wasn't, it was just terrible. It wasn't even the voice of a unicorn. What, what voice does a unicorn make? I was, I was standing there and I just, it just sounded like, a, it sounded like a girly voice, you know, from one of those um, My Little Pony um, TV shows done really badly by a guy with a deep voice <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, can you recall the first uh the first better than the twi uh, the, oh, the recall the the ones better than the 20s um dolphus uh, because i roll ones and twos consistently as a dungeon master i very rarely roll 20s um, it's probably one of the reasons why I've had so many people at my table when I was running public games is that, oh, Fred's here. Let's go over on his table. We'll be fine because he's going to roll ones and twos on a 20-sided dice and probably on the damage dice as well, um, which is why I don't roll damage on my dice. I use the average for the monsters that's in the, uh, the monster manual. So um, that just because I know I will roll really, really low, I don't even roll for the criticals. Okay, so I'm just going to do a test run to see how I'm going to wind this thing around a miniature uh, that has kind of arms there. And then suddenly I've got to try and get it up around here. And then that bit, crush that, crush that neck. Yeah, crush that neck. And then it's somehow got to travel up over the top. It's going to look a little bit like that. Like he's got a blue rope wrapped around him. Uh, because he does. Alright. Okay. Now there's a big area to cover. A D&D &D musical. Yes, I, I'm serious. A D&D &D musical. Did you also order your dice from um, Wish? No. No, I didn't. No. No, most of them are Chessex and most of them are from my game store. I suppose I could blame uh, the, uh, the game store for my poor um, dice. Uh... Part of the reason why I did a video on testing dice because I was quite sure that there was something wrong with my dice and not so much wrong with me. I think that's the uh, that's the trick is realizing that the problem it doesn't lie in you who are rolling the dice, but there's something wrong with your dice if they're constantly rolling really low. And I, I was very suspicious. So Daniel Fisher did a video on how to test them with salt water. I did one as well. And a whole lot of other people did as well. And then I think I also did one with, with sugar. Because I couldn't get any of the dice that were not, um, that were different sizes. I couldn't get any of the dice other than the D20 to float in the salt water. So I went with a different product. I went with sugar. 
And I think that was actually a, a result of one of my very clever friends who's way too smart for himself and likes to um, talk about it all the time. But he was right that sugar was a better uh, way of increasing the density of water because water isn't good enough to usually get um, dice to float. Uh, what's that, uh, Pesham? The D&D from the late 80s cartoon has, it's sounding like a, a goat. Ah, oh, yes, it does. It sounds like a goat. It's, it's, um, it's, is it a goat? It, I actually feel like it's almost kind of like a goat and maybe more like a sheep. Bah, bah, it's more like a, I mean, how do you go with happy bar? ba ba? Or uh, you go with the angry bar, ba ba, or you go with the confused bar, ba ba. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll stop doing that. I know that guys, that's got to be annoying. <laughs> All right, so that worked out reasonably well. We'll do that again. Around the back of the head, and uh, here's the problem: is I've got to be able to press it into place without burning myself, and then hold it down, which I will. It's working, it's working. All right, good. It's a time consuming process. I don't feel like this is going to be like an hour of, uh, of your time. I feel like you, you're gonna to need to um, bring along some music that you like, uh, a good drink, uh, some food, uh, maybe a potty, so you don't have to, to leave. You can just stay on the potty and keep working without having to move. An adult potty, I mean. A portaloo, bring the portaloo with you. Okay, so that's that's glued in place, and it's starting to look like what I was hoping for. Okay, where's that rope? We're gonna glue that end and then cut off some more, like so. La -na 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 -na. Oops, there's little little bits floating everywhere, but it, she's still working. <clears throat> Um, I'm looking through here. I'm trying to figure it out. The mini is looking good, by the way. Thank you, Lime. Thank you. I feel like it's going to have the texture and the and what I want out of it. And I can actually wrap rope around other sections if I feel like it's a bit too flat, which I probably will do. Because if you want one section to be a little bit fatter because you didn't quite get the the, the shape right, then you can do that. Yeah, no, 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 no. It'll be, I think it'll be better once we start working around the arms. Uh, the mini is looking good. Building its back lats and traps more. Yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap around there a bit more and get it, build it up, give it a bit of, bit of bulk, give it a bit of muscle. Do air elementals have muscles? Do air elementals have back lats and traps? Tell me now. I don't know. A squatty potty. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's that video where the um, the unicorn um, does its business, and then that business is then turned into ice creams for kids, and then they then have to do their business, and it comes out the same as the unicorn's business. That was so funny. That uh, that YouTube video was so funny. It was hilarious. It was apparently um, required viewing. Uh, when I was in the plumbing department at Mitre 10. Uh, the, they all insisted that I had to watch this because we actually sold the squatty potty and I didn't understand what they were talking about. They're all cracking up and laughing the whole time I'm watching this and I'm looking at the end, I'm turning and looking at the squatty potty and I'm saying, are you guys serious? You use this video to try and sell this product? And they just laughed. But apparently it was required viewing from anybody who worked in the plumbing department at the hardware store. <clears throat> Sorry, just drinking some water. Game stores usually um, usually buy, buy dice by the pound and separate the sets. Uh, well, no. Um, the, usually uh, they, they also can buy them in sets already. And um, I usually buy a lot of my dice. If I'm going to buy them separately, I buy them separately. But I also buy them in the, the containers that um, Chessex sells them in, too. So, so a lot of my dice came in the, the plastic uh, see-through container. 
and those are usually sold as like that from Chessex. I'm just gluing this end of the um the the rope so it doesn't come apart on me like it did before. I'd like to think that I'll be able to control that a bit more, but it's not working quite the way I'd hoped. Uh, what else is there? Um, lime. It should sound like Jolly Jumper from Lucky Luke. Oh, I can't even remember. Lucky Luke such a long time ago. Thank you. I'm trying, I'm try I haven't am trying. I been moving around that much, so I'm not rocking too much. Is, is the camera moving? It's time to drink. Squatty poppy, potty. Yeah, unicorn. Unicorn poopies. That's the one. That's the right word to use. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. <clears throat> now, it's actually not a bad idea for uh, an adventure in Dungeons & Dragons where um, you've got uh, a fey creature who's decided to uh, collect up all of the shite from a unicorn, sell it to the local um, population as a... Uh, as a, as a dessert and um, maybe it has magical properties <laughs> oh dear <clears throat> it, it does it does seem quite unreal magical fantasy land a soft serve ice cream oh dear <clears throat> okay all right I'll um I'll behave now probably not going to happen I'm lying you know it now I'm not going to behave I'm just going to wait for this to uh, stick together I've got two bits of, bits of rope that I can try to wind around this thing because we're now into just over what 66 minutes into the stream oh no ha 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 he he ha 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 there is it sticking it's yeah it mostly stuck all right let's have a look how we're going to deal with this now I'm a little worried about trying to get it around here because this is this is the thing is it's fine to wrap something around but then you've got to go over something. I'm thinking I'm going to wrap the arms first. Whoops, what was that? Did I break something? <laughs> I'm going to wrap the arms first. I feel like if I, I stick it onto the arms I can wrap around the arms and get some bulk going on there before I try to deal with the back section. Yeah. Or do I start at this end? Do I start at this end and do I wrap it around that way? Yeah, I think that's actually a smarter idea. Now somebody had said I should tie it on, but I feel like it's going to make it way too thick. Just because this, this poly rope is, is quite thick. It's 4mm, so it's not exactly thin. Uh, threads for an adventure. Unicorn poo. Exactly. Alright, so I'm going to do that. We're gonna we're gonna try going from the narrow wrist up towards the shoulder. So we'll start off with a bit of glue there. What am I doing? Just chuck on heaps, and then wait for it to set. And can I get away with doing two at the same time? It's probably not. No, it's gonna be too hard. Never mind. I did try. Oh, where's this? I'll glue that end. No separating for you. Stay there. So <clears throat> this this is probably a good time to have like a blow dryer so you can um, dry the glue faster so you don't have to wait for it to actually set before you start wrapping it your poly rope round. <laughs> I should have thought about that, but I didn't. Sorry about that. Okay, so where is my tools? They're all covered in glue. It's getting messy. And I feel like it, it's not quite candy floss, but um, okay, so that's, that is starting to set. I feel like that is mostly set. Okay. I might have to come back to that section to get it to work. I'm going to do a rough dry fit, see if I can wind this round successfully. Uh, it doesn't really need to be super fantastically 
accurate I suppose because I can go back over it right okay so that that certainly built the bulk of the, the arm in so let's give it a go okay so that's a big area to cover so there's bound to be screaming and yelling this time I keep saying that but you guys haven't really had, had me burn myself badly yet It usually happens at some point during this process, so um, stick, you know, don't lose hope. Okay. Oh, it came free. It's because the other the other end got soft, didn't it? It got soft. It came free. I put the glue too too close to the existing um, existing glue. All right. So that's not going to work quite the way I had hoped. We'll try it again in a sec. I'll just let that set. Whoops! There's a little slight hiccup. I well, I, I did. I got greedy. I, I should have I should have gone with less glue because I can apply the glue on the outside later, right? So if I don't put the glue quite so close, it'll be all right. But yeah, I got greedy. You're right. I got greedy. It didn't work. I'm getting. I'm getting frustrated now. Frustration setting in. Okay, so uh, glue that side there. I'm just going to glue that side there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. The other side is sort of coming free. So I'm going to try and attach over here. Could probably have used thinner rope and just wound it more often, but yeah. Okay. mostly stuck on yep that's mostly stuck on I just have to figure out how to wind it once I've finished once I've finished snurfu yeah yes I am um, it's a, a snurfu I had a, um, a slight problem ah okay no still still uh, drying Snurfu. Um, yes, I will attach this to the base before the end of the day. For those of you who are wondering, will I be attaching it? I will. I'll absolutely do that. Oh, for those of you who don't know, um, and might have played this adventure in the past, a rather old adventure called Expedition to Barrier's Peak is being re-released by uh, Goodman Games for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. So if you guys want to replay that adventure... Um, in a newer game system, you can. Um, I'm pretty sure you can pick it up from um, the Dungeon Master Guild anyway, the original one, if you don't feel like sort of waiting and you're happy to try and convert a lot of it yourself. Okay, so let's just have a look at how that's sort of soft. This side is kind of all right. Okay, I know what I'll do. I'm, I'm going to glue up here away from the original point and then I'll come back and do more so I won't get greedy I'll try not to here we go over here it was just too close to the original point I think that's half the problem all right there's glue everywhere and now wind it round as tight as I can and tighter and oh yep told you I knew it I knew I would burn myself there we go what's that more random questions do you like um, flight of the Concords um, I never watched Flight of the Concords. I know I'm from New Zealand, um, and a, a lot of people assume that uh, because I'm in New Zealand, I must have watched Flight of the Concords. 
but I never really cared for it actually um, it's just one of my th I mean I, I watched Xena uh, because you know it seems it, it was fun it was my sort of thing but Flight of the Concords no I was never really into Flight of the Concords um, hip hop um, rapping rhinoceros uh, yeah I never really um, I never really got into the flight of the Concords. I know it was a, a big thing at one point you know it was what sort of made New Zealand stand out you know because they were from New Zealand and all the rest but no I really didn't I didn't give two hoots um, sorry <laughs> okay so I'm gonna try uh, figuring out how I'm gonna wrap this And that is going to keep going, and then I'm going to wind it and then stick it there. Boom, boom. Let's do that. Okay, so glue there, glue around here, glue over here, glue on that side. I feel like I've probably applied sufficient. <laughs> oh, it came free. I did it again. Oh, 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 yep, that's it, I hurt myself, that's it, yep, burnt myself good then. Ah, uh, it came free. This is, this is the, this is the hassle, is you, you're trying to, to attach it, I thought I was far enough away from the original joining point. Clearly I was not. Okay. Let's just see if I can press that. Oh, it's, it's getting away on me now. Right, there. Stay. Stay, you sucker. Um, yeah, Warrior Princess. Yeah, she was. She was hot. She was all rage. Everybody was trying to get into it. It was, it was uh, well, in New Zealand anyway. Um, <laughs> until she got on the wrong side of 30. Um, yeah, I think, I think age um, caught up with her and... But also too, they had they'd done everything they could with that TV show, and uh, yeah, you, you know the, um, the you know that the uh, the actress when she suggests that they chop her head off is had enough. <laughs> uh, I think that's a, a good indication that that yeah, when they say, when the, when you got the actor, the main actor saying, yeah, um, it's job, but yeah, I think you should chop your head off. We, we've had enough. <laughs> There's no coming back, you know. <laughs> okay. That is still glowing. I'm going to... Oh, this is separated again. Feeling like maybe this was not the best choice, this, uh, this polyrope. Maybe it's just too thick, too hard to control. Should have prepared a whole lot of uh, bits of rope ahead of time, and that might have helped. It's just getting it to stick. That's the that's the biggest issue. Is just trying to make it stick in place and stay there. Just put a bit of glue there, bit of glue there. Just push it around. And a bit of glue, I don't know, somewhere there. Just sort of scrunch it around a bit. Okay, all right. That end is done. Let's uh, let's have a go at trying to wrap this around the arm. This time, further away from the original location. Wrapping. Actually very, very difficult to do. Either that or the glue is already set and I didn't put enough on. That could be it. Okay. I'm just going to glue that down and see if it stays there.
All right, cool. Um, what's this? Uh, Lime, any movies or shows from New Zealand you want to re recommend then? Um, not really. Uh, the only thing we have right new now that's that sort of uh, made in New Zealand is Shortland Street. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Um, yeah, so no, not really. There isn't anything major that's coming out of New Zealand right now. Not that I've heard of. I think you'll find that um, as uh, countries struggle to keep their economies going, that there are going to be more and more um, desire to move a lot of production over to China, no matter what it is. Um, I know that um, Weta, Weta Workshop, does a lot of the special effects in New Zealand for you know fantasy, science fiction movies and stuff, stuff like that. I know that they are always working on stuff. There is, there's never a time when they're not working on stuff. But you know, they, they don't just work on movies. They do, they do all sorts of things. You know, if somebody wants uh, a, a water feature that's uh, you know made up of raccoons, then good lord, you wind up with a whole lot of garden gnome-like raccoony things uh, in your, you know, and they might spend. $70,000 on that and uh, Weta will make that sort of stuff. I know they were doing uh, Thunderbirds which is like a TV show. I watched a little bit of it but yeah I still miss the old one. Okay so that is mostly in place. I'm going to just give this a bit of a, a whack with the glue gun around the back here and I'm going to spread the glue as well so it's sort of Part of the process, I guess, is to make sure things stay in place, but also I want to keep a lot of the features the rope is actually creating. So I'm only going to use it sparingly there. That's fine. Okay. Oh, that's not good. That hurts a little bit. All right. And grab another piece of this. We'll cut off another one. I think we'll get one more on today, and then I'll have to come back and finish it some other time. Or I might go crazy. You never know, I might go crazy as well. Yeah, Wes is pretty good. Um, I've, I've been been to the uh, to Wellington to have a look at sort of their some of their stuff and sort of behind the scenes. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was good. You know, I got to see uh, what was going to be the um, the Halo movie. Uh, that you know, the game Halo. Uh, there was going to be a movie. I saw the vehicle they built for it which was amazing. Um, they tried to put it into mass production, but it was so complicated, apparently. The thing could drive sideways, forwards, and backwards at the same speed that it was driving forwards. So it could do like, I think it was um, either um, between 90 and 120 kilometers an hour, backwards, forwards, and sideways, because you could move the whole... Um, axle the you know the wheels could turn so you could just drive sideways which was weird but still cool talk about the ultimate off-road uh vehicle <laughs> and it, yeah it, it had like a uh, a gun mounted on it i saw what they were they were building what looked like a an enormous uh, tree head out of tin foil and their specialized concrete as well which apparently is they made a boat out of and they were trying to see if it would uh, how long it would float for apparently it still floats so I guess that's good news okay so now I've got to try and figure out how to I'm going to do the big flat area here glue that in and then I'm going to wrap that round I'm going to go around a couple of times and get the beginning of that going around the uh, the next section that'll that'll be a good plan yep that's my plan. Let's try it out. Now I've just got to hold it in place without burning myself. Let's lay down, lay down, lay down, baby. Lay down. Yeah. We're going to get it in the back. Um, 
didn't they make mortal engines in New Zealand? Yes, they did. Yes, they absolutely did. I don't really feel like Mortal Engines was a particularly um, good movie. Uh, and I, it actually reminded me a lot of um, the, the moving city that is in John Carp Carpenter, the movie, you know, John Carpenter, which should have been called John Carpenter from Mars, um, or its original name would have probably done a lot better. Because I had no idea that John Carpenter, when it came out at the theatres, was actually a science fiction movie. All I thought it was was a period piece, and I was like, no, thank you very much. <laughs> but I realised it was full of um, people jumping around with swords and aliens and sp spaceships. I would have been all down for it. Anyway, never mind. Too late now. Uh, be back in a sec. Um, Fred, are you going to take all of the guns off people in New Zealand now? Are they going to? No, no they won't. Look, we've been through this before. I know what you're talking about. Fair enough. Um, we've got five minutes while I do this. We'll talk about, we'll talk about Christchurch and what took place there, which was really bad. Um, but for those of you who want to know what happened in Christchurch, look, a lot of people died. There's a lot of people injured. In New Zealand, we've had uh, many uh, situations arise over the years where somebody has walked around with a gun and uh, shot up a lot of people, uh, their family and other people. And we've got very strict gun legislation in New Zealand, okay? And what it'll mean is that the types of guns that you can purchase will, uh, semi-automatics will be off. The ability to buy a mag that has 30 rounds will be gone. Um, uh, you'll still be able to own a gun, but the, the restrictions will probably increase, so it'll be even harder to get a gun. And you'll have to re renew it more often. Uh, that's probably what's going to happen. And it probably should happen. But it isn't going to stop all of the, uh, the weapons that are getting transported by at night um, along the shoreline. So, but that's, that's it. I think it was a terrible thing. It is going to make, mean things have changed, but no, it doesn't mean that all the guns are going to go. Okay, all right, let's see if I can wrap this round without burning myself. Okay, all right. Oops, touched the wrong part there. That could have gone down well. <laughs> lay down Sally, yeah, lay down Sally. All right, sorry, I've got to move it into the center so you guys can see, eh? Hello, how's it going? Um, Jupa, Juju Bear, Juju Bear Adventures, hello. Uh, John Carpenter was actually a, a book Edgar Rice Burroughs did a, it was a book. You can still buy it uh, in the right places. So, yeah. Okay, so that has got uh, all of that wrapped around. I'm going to do, I just want to try something a little bit different because I've been using this poly rope, which is fine. It certainly gives me the bulk, bulky shape that I wanted. But I'm also sort of curious what will happen if I used a thinner rope to wind round sections, will I still get what I'm looking for? Because I think I might. Yep, yeah. yeah. I've got more more things that I should have in this office, but um, I've got this stuff. It's not quite as thick, and it's 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 a lot, you know, it's not quite as heavy, so it's uh, it's probably easier to control. And I'm kind of wondering if I can get away with winding some of this round. So I'm going to try that now. And that'll finish us up. It probably won't separate quite so much as well. That would be helpful. So um, I'm, going to, I'm going to have a go down here on the arm. I'm going to wind it round and see if I can get that to stick. I might just go there. Wind round. 
No, it's got to be from the low end to the high end. The only way it's going to work. And in fact, this stuff I could tie on and then glue in place, as you had pointed out before that I should do. Whereas the other stuff I think would be a lot more difficult. All right, so I'm going to just extend it and trim, extend it and trim, like so. Good. Tie that on tight and a little bit of fiddly, fiddly stuff, but we'll get there. Okay. All right, now, where's my little cutters? Just need to get some better. If I get better scissors, that'll probably make a big difference. <laughs> okay, so that has tied that in place. I'm going to get some glue and just tack that on like so in there and then spread it and I'll do the same thing there okay that's got that going and now if I were to wind this round am I going to get the kind of effect that I want probably going to require me to do it a lot more than the other stuff but it's probably going to be a lot easier to apply I think that's actually a good 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 thing okay that's already sticking in place so I won't I'll just leave that there and we'll keep winding that on so where's more glue bam bam um, is an air elemental mini the same as a water elemental just a uh, grayscale no not really no, I, um, I, I did a, a, a water elemental and I used it, I um, sort of created like a wave. Whereas this I'm trying to sort of go for more of like a, a tornado sort of effect. If that makes sense. And just wind that round. And then stick that down. This is actually a lot easier to use this stuff. When I come back to doing this, I might actually continue with that rope. That, not that I, I don't think the poly rope isn't a good idea, because it does give me a lot of sort of dimension to it. You know, it, it's going to be easy for me to pick up detail when I um, dry brush. But that actually, that string went on so much easier and although it looks like a mess I think it's actually going to work out fine I think last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this thing in, uh, onto a base so that it's actually set in place for for the uh, end of this so let's let's set it in place and then I'll come back to it some other time uh, let's go glue 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 it's a, just a bunch of it it's a big huge wad of it and then press it in make sure it's going to sort of stand up roughly in the center hopefully it's balanced enough I will sort of put some rocks around it so that it should help sort of hold it in place so I'm trying to make kind of like this <coughs> Um, lime cool I, I meant that you could easily use the the use this one and color it blue yeah you, you could I don't think you it would be an issue um, I wasn't a, a critique oh no 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 I, I no that's that's right don't 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 worry man I am not taking it personally or anything like that much love no problems lime no no I was just I, I just wanted this to have a sort of a different dimension to it and I felt like a water elemental making a water elemental look like a wave which is why I picked one that looked like a wave was a better idea uh, Richard I'll get to your question yep um, Richard Young I was planning on making the orca jelly out of a big uh, clump of hot glue yeah I did I've actually made a orca jelly um, Richard so in terms of tips I used a, a wooden mothball. I uh, wadded up a whole lot of, um, uh, what did I do? I used a whole lot of tin foil and built, up, built it up, but not before sort of uh, 
building in uh, two sort of uh, protruding, you know, sort of, um, what do you call it, stalks. You know, it has like two stalks coming out. So I used paper clips to um, feed in. I drilled holes into the, um, the, the, the wooden moth ball so that they would come out in the front. And then I, I just used, the, you know, followed the basic shape. I, I have a live stream video of the process. So if you can find a way of speeding it up or just chopping and changing, you know, watch just bits of it, it'll show you how to do it because uh, I did that last year. So if you want to make an orca jelly, I've got, a, I've got a live stream that actually shows you exactly what I did. Okay, let's just have a look and see how that turned out. It's still trying to dry. That's fine. Sweet. Nah, no problems, um, Richard. Hey, all the best. It actually, um, it was a lot of fun. I, I just coated the whole thing with, um, with hot glue. What I find is that hot glue doesn't like to stick to uh, tin foil very well. So my advice to you is don't try to cover it, just squirt it on. I would just squirt it on and then rub it into, into the um, tin foil so it's really thin because it's going to shift and move. And if you can get like a hair dryer and set it on cold, and it'll help dry out the glue faster so you don't have to apply quite so much glue. Make sure you've got lots of glue sticks because it, it takes a few. Okay, let's just check to see if this is hard. And okay, all right, so that's set in place. So there's our basics. I still got to do do a quite a bit more work, but then again, you know, a lot of these miniatures that I've made in the past have taken a bit of time. So this is how far we are, we are along our pathway. And um, pear charm, uh, what's that? Sorry. Have you ever made a mold of the mini and poured epoxy or latex? or latex minis no I haven't mainly because it's really expensive to do that um, unless you're you know and it, there's a bit of a learning um, curve to it so you can do it with simple miniatures but I haven't ever done that before I believe there are other channels how we've covered that before though okay so let's uh, let's wrap it up I think that's good enough for today and I'll come back uh, next week and we'll continue so yeah, if you found this video helpful or informative, please share and like the video, subscribe to my channel if you like this sort of thing, because guess what, I do this every single week, there's usually some sort of crafting or painting, and yes I do it live, so you can have a chat with me, um, if you want to support my channel, um, subscribe to my channel, uh, watch my videos, not just this video, but many others, I have many many other videos you're welcome to go and check out for players and dungeon masters, I don't do Patreon but down in the description there are affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon, I also have all the materials for this build down in the description um, that you're welcome to go and check out if you want to as well, if you have any feedback in the live chat then now is the time, otherwise if you weren't part of the live chat that's what the comment section's provided for, you know. YouTube's got a comment section. Give me your feedback. What did you think? Have you made an air elemental yourself and how did it work out? I would be interested to know. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh, the 20s getting in between them. This relationship is not going to last. You can tell now. <clears throat> I'll see you later, everybody. No problems, Rich, um, Richard. You're welcome, Mark, and Lime, Pearsham, Tommy. See you later.